The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Fortenza Vibrance Max Plus Saltro. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Soybean School. It is early September and the crop is advancing quickly. So on this episode, we're going to talk to agronomist Ken Curra from BASF. Ken is going to share some best practices for pre-harvest burn down and he also points out that it's a great opportunity to tackle some perennial weeds. So Ken, let's talk about the progression of this crop. This field, for example, what are you seeing here? At what stage are we? At, at how close are we to actually having to move into this crop? Yeah, so in this particular field, as far as uh, staging for a pre-harvest burn down, a harvest aid pass with a product like Aragon, we're actually standing in a field that this particular spot right here is a couple days away yet. But if you look at the rest of the field where the top leaves have kind of come off in behind me, if you were to take a close up inspection of that field, it is almost the perfect timing for a burn down pass for, uh, for pre-harvest aid work. 90% uh, of the pods have changed color. Basically we're seeing a little bit of green tinge in the top pods. Everything else in terms of pods has yellowed off and is heading towards maturity. And we're somewhere between 70 and 90% leaf drop. We always look at pod color change staging first. The leaf drop number is kind of a, a coincidence. It's usually 70 to 90%, but what I tell agronomists and growers, don't fall in love with the leaf drop levels and what you're seeing in the field at a distance. You have to look at pods to properly stage your burn down. Okay, one of the questions that we always talk about is uh, is restrictions and uh, you know talking to your buyer yep. about you know what you can spray and when you can spray it. How do you address that question? Yeah, so absolutely the disclaimer right up front for any grower, especially growing uh, uh, IP soybeans, food grade soybeans, talk to your buyer, uh, the contract holder to see what's permitted in terms of glyphosate use. Um, so get that clearance. Glyphosate always helps in the tank with these pre-harvest burn downs. If you have grass escapes or the perennial weeds, the south thistle, the dandelion, things like that, glyphosate is a high powered chemistry. So you should always uh, look to put that in the tank with the, with the Aragon burn down product if you're allowed to, but always get that clearance from your grain buyer. What about pre-harvest intervals, Ken? How long uh, should we be waiting? Is it two, three days? So the big thing with a product like Aragon, and we always say at BSF, be fashionably late. You're better to be late than early. The pre-harvest interval is only three days. Applied properly in good conditions, it works fast. So in soybeans, it's a three-day pre-harvest interval. If you are able to add glyphosate to the tank, that pushes it out to seven, but still that's a relatively short period of time. So we like to tell growers and agronomists, be fashionably late with that application. The product will work fast if done right. The pre-harvest intervals are pretty manageable. And if we're too early, we risk leaving some green in those top or later developing pods. So Ken, what about fields where we saw white mold this year? How does that factor in to a burn down? Yeah, white mold, pretty widespread disease this year. Um, you'll see a lot of fields that are exactly like the spot we're standing in, right? A little bit lodged, matted over, etc. And uh, you know, beans got big this year, right? So we look at best application practices. We would want to ensure good coverage. So let's get north of 20 gallons per acre of water. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, and also, you know, what's the benefit of spraying those fields that have white mold pockets? It's to even up the field for that harvest process. Yeah, let's finish up with some uh, best management practices here. Um, you know, you mentioned water volumes, travel speed, spraying conditions. What's on the top of your list? Yeah, so top of my list, proper environmental conditions. So it's a it's a heat of the day, sun is high like it is right now, sun is shining, high pressure application, right? Uh, and by high pressure, I mean high pressure system, uh, not, not so much pressure in the sprayer, do what works for you. But uh, you know, nice sunny days, nice fall days. You know, we want plants and weeds to be actively growing. They're opened up to take that, uh, take that chemistry in, right? High water volumes, so 20 gallons an acre minimum or more. Uh, the proper surfactant, so with Aragon, the proper surfactant is merge at 400 mils per acre. Don't forget your merge because you'll see pretty slow activity if you forget it. So uh, high water volumes. And we'll also talk a bit, and we have some pretty savvy growers out there that have experience with this, of making sure that they go north of 20 gallons per acre water, number one, push it close to 30 if they can, and they get really consistent and, and fast performance with that burn down. And the other thing we can look at there is actually slowing down the travel speed just to just to get better coverage with what we're applying and less turbulence behind the sprayer. And uh, quite interested to see if, uh, 
if any of the growers watching have some experience with that, that would be that'd be pretty cool to see a couple of passes that uh, in the field that at half travel speed and see what they uh, get in a really big lush soybean canopy and see what kind of observations they come up with. Final point, Ken, and that is about weed control here. You know, you're go here's a field pass with opportunity for perennial weed control. Talk about some strategy from that perspective. Yeah, so this field pass, and, and, I, and I'll preface my comments with, you know, my favorite saying at this time of year is that desiccation is not weed control, right? These, these weeds are mature, they're woody. A lot of them have gone to seed. Probably the only effect that this is going to have in terms of a weed control pass is preventing those newly, newly developing, say, lamb's quarter seed or flea bane seed heads from actually becoming viable. We'll dry them off and, and at least not have that seed bank contribution. But it's an opportunity if you can put glyphosate in the tank to get a, to get a crack at some perennials as they're shutting down and translocating nutrients and therefore herbicide can go for the ride to the root. So an opportunity to get at dandelion or, you know, sow thistle, Canada thistle, etc., with a with a translocating chemistry like a glyphosate. And it also gives you an idea of what you have to plan for next year. If you know if we were standing in a field that's full of flea bane or full of lamb's quarters or common ragweed, you know, we can have a discussion with our agronomist and, and talk about what were the gaps there. Was it just a biological gap and weed weed uh, emergence versus you know the herbicide activity do we just up and, and blame it on the environment or was there a gap in our herbicide program in the spring that we need to identify for that field going forward hey good stuff ken always great to have you on the soybean schools thanks for dropping by awesome thanks for the opportunity burn <laughs>